And from fires to ice on today's perspective, because the world's glaciers are losing an average of 273 billion tonnes of ice per year. And they've been doing that since the year 2000. And it's also a problem that is accelerating. Well, how much is 273 billion tonnes of ice per year? Well, it's equivalent, very roughly, to around three Olympic-sized swimming pools not every hour, not every minute, per second. It's all uh, the findings of a huge international study involving 35 research teams. And joining us now is Michael Zemp, who's director of the World Glacier Monitoring Service. I mean, those figures um, sound astounding, don't they? Tell us more about this loss, just how huge it is. Good morning. Great pleasure to be here. Uh, yes, the glaciers are losing ice. That's probably not a new message, but uh, what is rather alarming is the acceleration and the increasing amount of ice we lose. So at present, glaciers lose um, the amount of mass that you just mentioned with the Olympic pools per second. Um, you could also say at the moment, every year, glaciers are rising sea levels by about one millimeter. Now, you might say, well, one millimeter is not exactly a lot, but it's a small number with a huge impact. So every millimeter in increasing sea level will expose an additional two to 300,000 um, people to annual flooding. So a small change has a big impact. Yeah, we're seeing some of the uh, images from your uh, re report there. Well, I mean, just, just, just what does it mean um, for, for us as human beings? I mean, as you said there, it, that, that difference means flooding, of course. But what else does it mean? Yeah, the point is that what happens on the glacier doesn't stay on a glacier. So it's really all the downstream impacts that we have to worry, right? You could uh, summarize it on three levels. At the local scale, it's the hazards that we are worried. At the regional scale, it's the water availability. And at global levels, as mentioned before, sea level rise. So retreating glaciers, very often in the forefield, um, there are lakes building. They, they replace some of the beauty, right, of the melting glaciers, but these lakes are beauty, uh, but danger, dangerous beauties. So it, they can break out, or if an avalanche or a rockfall goes into, into these, these lakes, they burst out and are flooding the downstream villages and, and, and infrastructure. At, at the regional level, the water availability, it, it's really in the summers uh, when we have a, a drought, um, and then often in many regions, glaciers are the only remaining meltwater in these mountain catchments. And uh, at the moment, actually, there's more water coming because glaciers are melting in addition. But once these glaciers are diminished to a small percentage or are even gone, then the water is, is missing exactly in the period um, where, when this water is needed by agriculture, uh, by, by the people producing wine, uh, but also by, by the shipments down further in the Rhine, not for in, in the rivers. And it can also mean pollution of the water as well, can't it? Well, retreating glacier reveal um, sediments and, and, and stuff that has been covered for, for thousands of years, right? And so there's, there's um, opportunities and threats. There could be new bacteria, new virus that come out that can threaten us. But maybe it's also a reserve of, of interesting stuff that we could use um, for, for further developing our medicine. Let's go back to that figure that you mentioned earlier on, that one millimetre of, of, of sea levels rising. In a way, is that part of the problem? Because, yes, it sounds like a very small amount, doesn't it? And if you live on the coastline one millimetre a year, you're not going to notice it. And perhaps that's one of the difficulties that uh, is causing us uh, to have these problems, because people just aren't perhaps alarmed enough uh, about this problem than they should be. Yeah, I mean, it's not so much about the mean sea level, no. It's, the problem comes when the, when the storm floods are the tides with the storm floods coming in. And then so these this floods, this annual flooding goes, penetrates inland more and more. And, and, and the one thing is when you get wet feet, then you start to worry. But maybe actually economy will, will react much earlier. So it might be in Florida or other places in the coastal regions, it might get more and more difficulties to insure your property because of the increasing risk. And yes, the one millimeter from, from glaciers, that's, that's one part of the contribution, but there's other things that um, are rising sea levels. So the warming of the ocean itself, that's actually the largest contributor to sea level rise at the morning, at, 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 at the moment. And then come the glaciers, this is about one millimeter per year, and then followed by the big ice sheet in Greenland and Antarctica, like giant glaciers covering an entire uh, continent or a huge island. And so, 
The problem of that is that a lot of these changes are already committed because glaciers and ice sheets react with a, a response, a delayed response to climate. So a lot of these changes are already committed in the system and will happen even if we start to tackle to fight climate change. Yeah, you talked about it getting worse as well. I mean, how can you tell it's getting worse? And at the rate it's getting worse, what does that mean? Because presumably that's going to continue to, to accelerate. Yes, yeah, so we are, we are monitoring glaciers and also the, the ice sheet uh, very carefully. So every year we basically have the latest number on, on how this, this has um, increased. And at the moment for the glaciers, we see that uh, since the year 2000, um, we had an increase of about 36% from the first to the second decade. So we see that this uh, melting is, is, is taking up speed and it's getting worse and worse. So really, the international glacier year that we're having at the moment is is a, is a wake up call uh, to see that we have a problem. Climate change is taking place. Yes, geopolitics at the moment we have another focus, but climate change is not going away, and we need to tackle that. Otherwise, the cost and the damage is going to be tremendous. Yeah, tackling it. How on earth do we do that? Can we actually do anything about it? Well, I said part of the ice is lost due to this uh, delayed response of the glaciers. So by the mid of this century, we're going to have to adapt to these committed changes. But we still can save a part of our glaciers. Uh, and it's actually as simple and as complex as reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. So every fraction of additional warming uh, that we can avoid will help us. So back to this one millimeter, right? One millimeter sea level rise exposes two to 300,000 people to annual flooding. But every millimeter of, of that we can avoid will also save this amount of people from this flooding. So climate change is human made. And, and I think that's actually good news because it means that we can solve the problem. So every tenth of a degree avoided warming with safe glaciers, it will save us from downstream impacts and it will save us money. Yeah, I mean, we can solve the problem, but the difficulty is getting that political will to solve the problem, isn't it? I mean, there are some countries, some areas of the world that are, are, are trying to do their bit, as it were. There are other areas of the world which is actually going back the other way. Um, I'm notably, of course, thinking of the US at the moment. It's very difficult to persuade people and politicians when they've got other issues on their minds as well about uh, what, what's more important. Yeah, well, maybe here the, the kind of the scientific community can serve as an example. So we, we realized we have a global problem. We have to stand together and do the observations in all the different countries, bring together the data uh, and tackle that problem. And Climate change is a global problem. No country can, can solve it by itself. So only together we can actually stand together and, and tackle um, this, this, this challenge. So I really hope that 2025 is going to be remembered as the year where humanity finally set off on its expedition to tackle climate change. We can hope. We keep our fingers crossed. Michael Zem, thank you very much for joining us on the programme. Michael Zemp, uh, Director of the World Glacier Monitoring Service, joining us there. Thanks. Thanks a lot.